Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. Trey Ogden versus Ignacio Bahamondes. I'm glad this fight's being contested at 160. Trey Ogden having taken this fight on short notice and having undergone a weight cut a few days ago at this point, you know, a week ago. Uh, it's good that he's being accommodated here. Still, this uh, is a fight I expect between two guys going 100% with no issues. Paha Mendez is the guy with more upside. He's 25 years old. His whole future's ahead of him. He's 13-4 and four so far as a pro, and he's a big guy. He's got four inches of height and three inches of reach on Trey Ogden, who I thought was a big lightweight before looking at these stats. Trey Ogden is 33 years old, smack dab at his prime. He's 16-5 and five overall. Not one of his fights has ever ended via TKO or KO whether it's a win or a loss, it's all via submission or decision. And that says something about his chin and his power. He's definitely got uh, both, I'd, or, you know, no power, but a good chin, maybe. His striking, I didn't think much of uh, when he fought Jordan Levitt. Again, he was neutralized for a whole round with uh, leg kicks, low side leg kicks, oblique kicks or whatever. And after that, I my estimation of a striking went up when he beat Daniel Zell Huber. I liked what I saw from him more. Uh, you know, he's got good calf kicks and a nice overhand right, and he was winning that fight with uh, cage control, uh, or octagon control in that case. Uh, Trey Ogden, though, is a submission artist, first and foremost. 11 of his 16 wins come via submission. That's where he gets his bread buttered, so to speak. He's got seven rear naked chokes and three guillotines, and then one other arm triangle or something. But uh, seven rear nakeds and three guillotines. Those are his two primary moves. And still, he's been submitted himself with a guillotine and a rear naked. Thomas Gifford got him out of there twice in a minute or so with a guillotine choke. Thomas Gifford was uh, around the UFC for a cup of coffee a few years ago. Nick Brown, who fought a few days ago in Bellator, got him out of there with a rear naked choke. And then his other two fights are decisions, his other two losses. You know, and uh, Ignacio Bahamondes, he's only won one fight via submission, and it was to Rong Zhu in his last fight. Ignacio got him out of there in the third round with a ninja choke. And I couldn't think of a better way to get your first submission victory. That was very much like Nate Landwehr getting his sub in the third round over Ludovic Klein. Just a great way to get it done. And it shows that Bahamandas is still developing as a fighter. But one thing that may not need too much development is his striking. Although he still has some things to work on in my opinion. But uh, still, for his style of striking, he's very good. He switches stances a lot, right? a lot of powerful strikes, especially up the middle, big knees, and throws some good hooks. What he doesn't throw too much of is straight punches. He'd probably be better served being a jouster, but I don't know. You know, maybe that's not something he can change. Although I'm sure he could if he got with the right camp and whatever, but you could see it's just not in his DNA. And he got that big third round knockout over Roosevelt Roberts with a spinning hook kick. Can't forget that. That's certainly uh, in his arsenal. And that was a highlight for the ages. I don't think he's ever going to top that as hard as he tries. But uh, probably not any other UFC fighter. Not too many of them ever will either. So that was a great highlight. He does uh, maybe do too much uh, sw stance switching. I think, you know, that could work against him. But uh, so far, it's worked good for him, and I do think uh, he strikes well from both sides, and he also strikes well while he's switching stances. So he's definitely a more sophisticated striker than a guy like Daniel Zell Huber, who looked pretty limited when uh, Trey Ogden was marching him down. Baja Mendez, he was beaten uh, twice by decision against McDessey and Salvador Becerra. I thought he won the Salvador Becerra fight, but the John McDessey fight, I thought he lost. He lost that by just, you know, McDessie was too slick, just too much of a striker for him to uh, fight that early on. That was his UFC debut, I believe. And uh, his two other losses are by submission, one to Preston Parsons and one to a guy that I'm going to generously call a bum and hope he's not watching this. But uh, those were earlier on in his career. Uh, it's not to say that it won't happen again. In fact, if it does happen, there's a good chance Trey Ogden gets it done because that's Trey Ogden's bread and butter. Trey Ogden winning via submission early on in the fight, that is certainly a possibility, but he's got to win the wrestling battle. Ignacio Bahamundes seems like a tough guy to dominate. I'm taking Ignacio Bahamundes to win. 
I'm taking him to win, and I'm only throwing sprinkles on his submission lines because I'm a degenerate. But my prediction is he wins a decision, which you can get that at plus 125. I didn't bet on it because, again, there's too many different variables. But uh, Trey Ogden's never been knocked out. Ignacio Bahamondas is primarily a knockout artist. But Trey Ogden's been submitted three times, and Bahamondas, I think, is a little craftier than people give him credit for. So submission lines for Bahamondas plus 1,200, 1,600, 2,500. That's how Bet US does their, you know, uh, submission props. So I've thrown sprinkles on those, and I'm going to hope it hits. But generally speaking, I'm staying away from this one. In fact, if I saw any value, it'd be on Trey Ogden. But uh, I'm not going to touch that because, you know, my pick, I think uh, D uh, Ignacio Bahamandes will be too much for him. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.